Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this brand new G-Series gaming motherboard from MSI. This is the MSI Z87GD65. We'll start off with a quick look at the retail box. You have a dragon of course and Targaryen colors which uh, just just goes, goes along perfectly. Let's uh, flip around to the back to actually talk about some of the specs. This is a Z87 motherboard so it's going to support Intel's fourth generation core processors, codename Haswell, now their fourth generation core. Uh, the Z87 chipset, of course, as well. Uh, bear in mind, this is a Socket 1150 motherboard, which is not backwards compatible with Socket 1155, uh, so don't try to plug in a second or third gen Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor into this motherboard. Detailed specs are listed right there. I'm going to be going over most of these as well. We do have some highlighted specifications and features that we did want to point out. So starting over here on the left side, we have Audio Boost Technology. Reward your ears with true quality. Uh, MSI has gone the extra mile to uh, put gold audio jacks, head, built-in head, headphone amp, amplifier, uh, electromagnetic shielding, and all quality, uh, high quality audio capacitors for a superior onboard audio experience. Uh, to the right of that we have the killer E2200 network interface card uh, built in or network interface chip built onto the board uh, that will allow you for uh, network or packet prioritization so you can priorita prioritize your game traffic over your other traffic to give you a uh, more lag free experience while you're gaming. We also have OC Genie 4, that's your one, uh, one touch overclocking function. Uh, and then we also have some additional features uh, listed down here in the red section. So you do get multi-GPU support. Uh, you can do two-way SLI. You can also do three-way Crossfire X. Uh, you can also do quad of either if you're going to be rocking a dual GPU card or two. You get uh, Sound Blaster, Cinema Audio. Uh, you also get Military Class 4 components. Um, so they have upgraded the uh, components on the board for uh, power delivery, for example, to give you more overclocking headroom as well as faster response time. Finally, a gaming device port. So if you do have an older uh, PS2 mechanical keyboard, for example, that is supported as well. Inside the retail box, we have, well, the motherboard itself, of course. We're going to finish with a closer look at that. Uh, for accessories, we have an input-output shield, which you should always install before the motherboard. Uh, this one is black with red highlights and text on it to indicate to you which port is which. Sticking with the black and red color scheme of this board. This is the MSI M connector, so you get a couple blocks here for your front panel connections. You can plug your uh, leads into that and then plug those into the board, which makes it quite a bit easier to connect your case to your motherboard. I'm just going to remove the rest of these items out of here so we can have them all displayed here. Uh, you do get an MSI SLI bridge, uh, which is quite nice. It's actually black. It has an MSI and SLI logo on there. It's a flexible one, so depending on the spacing of your graphics cards, it should help you accommodate them. Uh, you get an MSI G-Series uh, case badge if you want to put that on your case or anywhere else, adhesive on the back. You get a couple voltage leads, so you can plug these two voltage read points on the motherboard, connect those over to your multimeter meter if you have one for detailed voltage readings. Four serial ATA connection cables. Uh, it looks like all four of these are going to have a straight plug on one end and a 90 degree angle plug on the other end. You also get the little metal clasps to hold them in place. They're black and white. And they're all going to be SATA Rev 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so don't worry if you're plugging in a high speed SSD to those. It will work at its full rated speed. Here's your included driver and utility disk. Chances are you will not want this except possibly to install your, uh, your, your LAN driver. Uh, you will definitely want to go to the MSI website to download the latest versions of those. That will be a better option. Uh, you also get a quick installation guide. This is more of a generic computer building guide. You can also check out our video on Newegg TV if you want more info on that. Software and applications users guide. So for the software that's included here, you get uh, like, like command center, which you can use to do uh, BIOS and UEFI changes from within your operating system. This will walk you through that. You also get your main user's guide for your actual motherboard itself. So this is going to give you important stuff such as, I'm guessing, oh, a, long a long preface, preface, however that's pronounced. Ah, yes, all the uh, actual components installed on the motherboard, an actual uh, layout telling you what's what. Very important to keep that on hand while you're doing your builds. Finally, a door hanger. You got one side that says, I'm sorry, I'm busy gaming. The other side that says, I'm not here. Very straightforward. Taking a look at the motherboard itself, as you can see, we have a very distinct black and red color scheme going on. Not only the ports, but also the PCB itself are all black with some red highlights on the heat sinks. Let me flip around to the back really quick to get a better appreciation of the board. 
Uh, kind of a bit of a semi-gloss on that, but a, a, a nice look overall. Also, we have Phillips head spring-loaded screws mounting most of the heat sinks on the board, so that's going to allow you to remove those a bit more easily if it does become necessary in the future. Let me just reposition that. Okay, uh, I did want to point out the fan headers that are scattered throughout. You get a total of five. First off, a couple CPU fan headers, which are located right here and right here, just on the upper left and upper right of the dim slots. Uh, you also get... Uh, another system fan header right here, uh, another system fan header down in the lower right, and I believe I said there was five, which means there's one more. Ah, yes, the fifth, the fifth is in the top right right there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and all of those are four-pin PWM capable. Next up, we're going to go down here to the lower right-hand side of the board. I'm going to go over all of the detailed components, at least as much as I possibly can. Uh, so first off, you'll notice some front panel headers, uh, front panel right there as well as down there. You can use those with the M connectors to uh, properly get your front panel connection points up and running. Uh, the four pin fan header I already mentioned, uh, three USB 2.0 connection points right there. Note that the red one there is going to support uh, always on and fast charging features uh, that are supported by this motherboard. Uh, you also have a COM header just to the left of those. A uh, debug LED which I find to be very handy particularly if you're getting your system uh, up and running for the first time. You can check the code that's reported there and help yourself uh, determine what the issue might be. Uh, you also have a TPM header right above the Go To BIOS button. The Go To BIOS button is one of those handy features that you probably didn't need prior to using Windows 8 and an SSD, but sometimes the motherboards boot so fast that you can't even get into the uh, UEFI. So push that little button that will force it to go into the BIOS on the, on the next restart. Uh, you also get an OC switch right there, so that's going to change some of the overclocking parameters of the OC Genie button, which is located right there. Uh, on uh, surface mounted power and reset buttons right next to that, so particularly help helpful in an external build. And uh, lastly, your audio connector right there for front panel mic and headphone connections. That's located just below the audio boost uh, uh, EMI shield, which is right there. That's over your uh, included 8-channel sound kit. All of your sound components uh, located on this side of the board, all grouped there. And uh, that's speaking of uh, this area of the board. Let's move on to our PCI Express. Um, we have all of that located right here. So top to bottom, uh, we have all PCI Express. No more PCI on this board. Uh, actually, Z87 chipset no longer has a built-in PCI controller. So you get a total of four X1 PCI Express connectors. And then for uh, graphics cards or otherwise, more bandwidth intensive, you have your full-length slots. So full-length X16 slots, one, two, and three right there. Top one here is wired for X16. And we have uh, X8 and X8. Uh, bear in mind, these are going to have different uh, connections to the PCI Express controller on your CPU, depending on the configuration. So if you have a single graphics card plugged in up here, you'll get X16. You can also do by 8 and by 8 if you're going with a two-way solution. And if you go with three-way uh, for Crossfire X, uh, you can do by 8, by 4, and by 4. Um, also want to point out that you do have quad, uh, quad SLI and quad Crossfire X support if you use dual GPU graphics cards. And again, you'll just want to use uh, the top and second full-length PCI Express slot. Uh, also right above that, just while we're in the area, you do have an MSATA port. Just wanted to point that out because it is right there. Um, that's MSATA, bear in mind, not MPCIE. There's a slight difference in the wiring there, although the slot is physically the same. Uh, and that will tie in with the chipset, which we're kind of moving along to talk about right now. So down here, you will notice the MSI logo. Let's see if I can get that to shine for you. There you go. MSI logo. Uh, that's on the uh, Z87 chipset, of course, with the heat sink right there with the nice dragon on it. Uh, and that's controlling a variety of things, but that also includes your serial ATA. Now remember that MSATA slot that I just showed you? Uh, one of these serial ATA connection points will be taken up by that MSATA slot if you populate it, and that's what that sticker is there to tell you. So now that it has told you, I'm going to peel it off. There we go. Okay. Uh, for serial ATA connection, though, you have a total of eight ports right there. Uh, the right ports that the sticker was over are the uh, serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports that are controlled by the Z87 chipset. You also get a couple more that are right here. Those are controlled by an add-on chip, but they're also, say, to Rev 3, 6 gigabits per second. Uh, the six ports controlled by the chipset are uh, also RAID capable, so you can do RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. And the fact that they're all SATA 6 gigabits per second means that you have lots more configuration options than you did with prior uh, Z77, the Z77 platform, for example. So if you have lots of SSDs, well, you can go willy-nilly, plug them all in. 
Uh, next to that, you have a right angled USB 3.0 connector, so that's handy for cable management. Let me just set the board upright so we can continue along up the side. All right, so there's your USB 3. Uh, above that, you have your dual BIOS, uh, and you actually get a surface mounted switch so you can jump back and forth between the two of them, uh, which I find nice to have the actual switch. Uh, above that, you have your 24 pin main motherboard power connector. Above that, you have voltage read points. Uh, so those little leads that I showed you guys in the accessories, uh, you can plug those in right there and then connect those up to your multimeter to get your voltage readings. Uh, above that, you have your additional system fan header that I kind of showed you at the beginning. CPU fan header is right there at the top as well. And then below those, you have your DDR3 slots. So you'll notice you have four of them. They support dual channel configurations. So I would recommend buying your DIMMs in matched pairs of two. You can also go for a quad channel kit if that's your thing and you want to populate all four of them. You can support up to eight gigs per slot. So that gives you up to 32 gigs of DDR3 memory you can install total. Uh, does, of course, support Intel's XMP, or Extreme Memory Profiles. Uh, and Intel is officially supporting DDR3 speeds up to 1600 for this platform. Uh, and then you can have overclock speeds of up to 3000, which is pretty insane and very difficult to find actual memory kits that support that. But I should mention, if you are overclocking, it's going to be heavily dependent on your CPU. The memory controller is built into the CPU these days, uh, and the strength of that controller is going to uh, affect uh, how high of a speed you can actually get dialed in with your DDR3 memory, but I'll leave that to you overclockers out there. Next up we have the LG 1150 socket, which is right there. Why don't I show you guys the pins? Why not? There. There are the pins inside the socket, which you should always uh, keep hidden and protected at all times unless you're doing an overview on the motherboard. Uh, bear in mind, again, this is not backwards compatible with 1155, so if you have a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge, uh, second or third generation core processor, don't try to plug it in right there. You need a fourth gen uh, Intel Core processor, socket 1150 has well. Uh, also, you have power delivery components to the uh, left and above that actual socket. And if you're into little little touches, if you look at it from the side, you'll also notice more of that dragon theme going on. You actually have dragons on the chipsets themselves, which is kind of cool. I'm sorry, not chipsets, the heat sinks. Yeah, there you go. Um, and the heat sinks, of course, are providing additional cooling. Uh, you also have a heat pipe extending between them, so that's going to kind of help them share the uh, thermal mass that they have available to dissipate the heat. You also no notice your super ferrite chokes there on your power delivery componentry. So if you are going for uh, an overclock, well, having the higher grade power delivery components is always helpful there. It's going to help keep them cool uh, as well as keep them um, maintaining steady power for your overclock and uh, your, your stability. That's, what, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, also up here, eight pin supplemental CPU power connector. So make sure you plug that in from your power supply. And finally, we have inputs and outputs, which are located right here on the side of the board. Again, uh, gaming ports over here. Uh, so you have a combo PS2 port right there. So if you have an older mouse or a keyboard that's your favorite for gaming, you can still have support for that. Uh, you also have a couple standard USB 2.0 ports, uh, which I find often aids in compatibility. Uh, they've also use, used uh, additional uh, gold contact points in the connections here uh, for your lower latency uh, connection from your gaming peripherals. A uh, couple audio connection points right here. You have a Toslink uh, audio out as well as a coaxial audio out. Uh, you have a surface or an external clear CMOS button right there. So you can use that to clear your UEFI settings. And it's nice to have that on the outside of the case. Uh, you do have built in or an iGPU, I should say, an integrated GPU in uh, any of your Haswell processors that you might purchase, or I should say the vast majority of them. So when you get your processor installed, you will have uh, automatic video and you can uh, access that via these video outs right here. You have a uh, DVI right there, also an analog VGA connector, that's a 15 pin D sub plug, uh, also HDMI right there. And uh, another cool thing about Haswell is you actually do have triple monitor support. So if you have uh, monitors that have all of these connections, you can plug in all three and uh, even without a discrete GPU have tri triple monitors. Uh, four more USB 3.0 ports right here. Uh, there is your integrated killer NIC uh, via the RJ45 connection point right there. Then finally, you have your analog audio connection points for your 8-channel audio uh, analog outputs as well as the microphone input. And one last detail about this board, I've been talking about the uh, integrated audio, but I did want to point out it is supported by the Realtek ALC1150 audio chip. 
That's going to do it for this unboxing and overview. Once again, this has been the MSI G-Series Z87 GD65 Gaming Motherboard. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Don't forget to, sub to subscribe, and don't forget to like this video because it really helps us out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.